like to share with you a little story. 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 This was the very first episode of the Filthy Frank story. Dr. Filthy Francis was the literal embodiment of everything a person should not be. Yet somehow, he's one of the most iconic and beloved YouTubers to ever grace the platform. Unfortunately, Filthy Frank is no longer with us. R.I.P. Filthy Frank, you'll be missed. Goodbye, Filthy Frank. You've lived your life. Joji will take your place. Poor guy wanting to make music, but everyone cares about Frank more. This comment couldn't be more wrong. Frank was abandoned so Joji could shine. As of today, Joji has sold 10 million records in the US alone, making him the most successful musician who was previously a YouTuber. And I mean a real YouTuber. One who uploaded consistently, identified with the platform, and built a fan base. Not like Justin Bieber, Post Malone, or Selena Gomez posting a couple of videos 12 years ago. George Miller has shown us many different versions of himself over the years, but it seems like Joji is the version of himself he always wanted to be. You may think this transition from super famous YouTuber to super famous singer was easy. I mean, millions of people love you, right? Wrong. Filthy Frank's viewer base were millions of toxic, unforgiving internet trolls. The type that would bully guys like Joji into submission. He carefully crafted a master plan that he executed over three years to build up his music career through the beloved Filthy Frank character, then killed him forever at the peak of his popularity. Make sure you're hydrated while watching this video. Disaster Music was the name of the very first YouTube channel created by George Miller in 2011 who at the time was a 16-year-old attending the Canadian Academy while living in Japan. He uploaded a few goofy skits of him and his friends, but not for long. He took a one-year hiatus after it wasn't working out. During this hiatus, he focused on his music career. I need some cold air. I'm rolling down my windows. Only follow signs in whichever the wind blows. By day, George Miller was singing alongside his classmates in the school choir. By night, he was spitting bars in the Japanese hip-hop group called Beats and Miso. <laughs> His name? MC Ruckus. Beats and Miso was a collective of creatives who rapped, beatboxed, and embraced hip-hop culture. I don't know if he ever went by the name Disaster Music, but it's safe to say his intentions were to promote his own music by making this channel. George would return to YouTube on August 5th, 2011 with the most iconic and artistic intro of all time. I'd like to share with you a little story. Ah uh, yes. It was quite the story. From here, Filthy Frank was the face of the Disaster Music channel. He told us stories about his everyday life, giving us a taste of his personality, which consisted of mostly offensive and shocking humor. Over the past week, people were going back and forth, throwing racial slurs at each other, and I loved it. And it didn't even take long for him to bless us with his first song, Who's the Sucker? which was the beginning of George's meme rap career. Just a few months later, we got the introduction of Pink Guy, which would be the second character of the Filthy Frank universe. Part of Pink Guy's character was that he rapped. Most of the time you saw a Pink Guy video, you were going to get a song with it. It was a sneaky way for George to promote his future music career into the Filthy Frank lore. Along with Pink Guy, there was Red Dick, Prometheus, then the Dark Lord Chin Chin, then Salamander Man, Lemon, Safari Man, Fake Frank. There were so many characters that were involved in the Filthy Frank show because that's exactly what it was a show. If you clicked on this video in 2012 called I Hate Fat People and you weren't familiar with Filthy Frank, you might think this is just a rude teenager with a throat condition trying to be edgy and get a rise out of people. But when you scrolled to the comments, you saw a bunch of praise. People who loved this questionable humor. You had to pick a side. You either think he's an asshole or a relief from an overly PC society. George didn't start every video with a disclaimer saying that Frank is a character and he shouldn't be taken seriously. He just kept creating and it was up to you to figure it out. The Filthy Frank story, as well as the slew of side characters, was extremely complex and lacking continuity. Sometimes he would upload videos for a full year without continuing the story. If you think the story aspect was just an excuse for him to make edgy jokes and have a cop out to avoid being canceled, Tell that to this 5,000 word timeline of the story, including a table of contents and trivia questions, along with a number of extensive breakdowns on YouTube and of course millions of fans who were excited to see the plot evolve. But the more confusing and twisted the plot became, the crazier and crazier Frank got, the more fans wanted to dive deep into his channel, go back and watch every single video, obsess over him until they were all in on the joke. YouTube didn't like Filthy Frank. Even back in 2013, before everybody knew that YouTube had a bias for family-friendly content, creators who pushed the boundaries of the community guidelines were facing punishment. He constantly was getting videos age-restricted, deleted, copyright claimed, and was on the brink of losing everything. It was around this time, 
mid-2014, where George actually attempted to quit the Filthy Frank character. This was long before he peaked in popularity. It was around 200,000 subscribers. May 3rd, 2014, he posted a video called Filthy Frank Exposes Himself. I have not been well the last couple months. Long story short, I was born with this, but I was recently diagnosed with a brain condition that uh, gives me seizures induced by stress, which unfortunately uh, comes from, a lot of it comes from running this show. Uh, it's tough. So I just needed to come back and, and explain a few things to you guys. So I, I hope you guys understand. I'm terribly sorry. You know, this, this, this sort of thing happens, you know, like, I, for the first time ever, he addressed the camera as George Miller, in a very serious manner. The remainder of this 12-minute video is George announcing multiple different projects he's been working on and what to expect moving forward, including an animated series, two Pink Guy albums, merchandise, and a vlog channel, Joji Vlogs. This was the first introduction of the alias Joji. That, uh, this channel really has nothing to do with Filthy Frank or anything, and I would like to keep it that way, so really it's for myself. So. If it bores you, I'm terribly sorry. My life is pretty boring. So the Joji vlogs were supposed to be a detailed look inside of his everyday life. No pranks, no skits, no filthy Frank at all. Only the diehard of the diehard fans liked these vlogs. They were shaky, lacking structure, lacking entertainment, and kind of lacking purpose. But most people's everyday lives are mundane. That's why vloggers have to make up these ridiculous scenarios to be entertaining. However, there is one very important thing that these vlogs conveyed. Happiness. George was very happy making these videos. He was laughing, hanging with his buds, making music. It was clear he loved Joji Vlogs. Which made me go back to this Filthy Frank Exposed video and realize how much of a transitional moment this was for his career. I left out one major detail about this video. His fans hated it. They hated the idea of him slowing down. They hated all of the new ideas he had. They were toxic, aggressive, rude, and basically just thousands of edgy children who wanted more filth. They did not care about his health, his well-being, him as a person, and a lot of them thought that this was going to be his demise. So going back to the video, you can tell from his demeanor, he's trying to be serious, but almost afraid of what the response will be. Like, he knows they're gonna hate it constantly reassuring them that the content isn't going to change and everything is going to be the same. But if everything was going to be the same, then what's the point of putting out an update video? I believe it was this video where George wanted to transition out of the Frank character, become a more true version of himself, making music, being chill, some jokes and pranks here and there, but calming down severely since he had a health condition he needed to handle. He hoped that his fans would accept the transition since he had a cult-like following. Some of them did, but most of them didn't forcing him to come to the realization that Filthy Frank could not die. If he ever wanted to achieve his dreams of becoming a musician, he needed to grow that fan base. The transition wasn't just gonna be, hey, uh, I'm done with this, come follow my other thing. It needed to be smoother and slower. George deleted the Filthy Frank Exposed video, acted like it never happened. He sent all of his viewers to the new TV Filthy Frank YouTube channel since Disaster Music was on the brink of being deleted. From May 3rd, 2014 and on through the next three years, he would embark on his journey of growing his fan base through the Filthy Frank show with the ultimate goal of slowly transitioning into Joji. The content actually got filthier. I don't know how much it impacted his health, but there's no way that it helped. He did things that were so disgusting, I can't even display them in this video. Bathing in a bath of ramen, making soup out of dead rats, making a cake out of human hair and eating it, making a cake out of vomit and eating it. Pink Guy was making raps and messing with people in public. He brought back the iconic Filthy Frank reacting to things on the internet series. Some of these videos doing tens of millions of views. From 2014 to 2016, Filthy Frank exploded. He was the counterculture. He was anti-pop culture. He was the furthest thing from political correctness, which is why people loved him. The content he made will never be made ever again. YouTube would strike someone down in an instant if they tried to do this type of stuff. All the while, he was building a fan base of millions. I also believe that Pink Guy was actually more famous than Filthy Frank. He had gone viral so many times in that suit, including literally inventing the Harlem Shake, and it was just so memorable. But remember that he always released his music through Pink Guy. His fans loved it, but it wasn't serious. It was meme rap, not well produced, not well mixed, just another attempt to get some laughs. During the midst of his blow up in 2015, he released two songs, Tom and You Suck Charlie, under the artist name Joji. These were the very first Joji records. The records consisted of somber and smooth lo-fi beats with Joji softly rapping and singing, obviously being totally opposite from his manic life as Filthy Frank. These songs, 
didn't perform that well. He also had to disable the SoundCloud comments because people were going there and bullying him. Only the obsessive fans liked it. For the next year, he quietly released tunes and didn't promote them that much. About 90% of these early records were just instrumentals. He maybe had four or eight bars of singing, and the rest of the song was just instrumentation. A lot of his vocals kind of even sounded like they were sampled, like you couldn't even really tell if it was him. The song World Star Money was one of the first Joji records to get some attention from his fans. This was a smart strategy for him. Instead of just throwing a ballad of him singing his heart out with a full-on music video, he planted little seeds, just a couple of singing lines or a couple of rapping lines, not trying to overwhelm them, just slowly gaining their interest and slowly gaining their trust. Throughout 2016, he was working on a Pink Eye album, releasing music videos and snippets throughout the year. The fans could not wait for Pink season. It's also worth mentioning that George was collaborating with a lot of other big creators, as well as getting love from musicians. He was a huge fan of the SoundCloud scene on the EDM side and on the rap side. Music people wanted to f with him since he was a huge YouTuber and he was lit. But I'm sure behind the scenes, when they hung out, they realized he was just a really cool dude. So he was making a lot of friends in the industry. Pink Season released in January of 2017. It was a 33 song magnum opus of meme rap, which was a massive hit with his fan base. If there was a best meme rap album award, this would win every year. It should have won a Grammy. Pink Guy as an artist and an internet figure was peaking higher than ever. But remember during the peak of all of this success, he was still quietly in the background working on Joji music, planting those seeds. A big part of his transition out of YouTube into music was with his affiliation to 88 Rising. 88 Rising is a management, record label, video production, and marketing company. They gained popularity by working with Asian artists who released their music in the States. Before Joji, some of the popular artists were Rich Brian, Keith Ape, and the Higher Brothers. Obviously, Joji would be the perfect fit for them. In October of 2016, he got the first post on their page. It was something of a Pink Guy music video, but it wasn't him performing. I think it was the label's way of using George's influence to market this other song that was playing in the background. They would ultimately post his first song ever on their page, Tom, over a year after it was originally released. Then they posted another and another, giving us the obvious indication that 88 Rising and Joji are working together, just assuming that he signed with them around this time. This would bring us to April 2017 with I Don't Wanna Waste My Time. Which was full blown, in your face singer songwriter Joji. Emotional ballad, reverbed vocals, not trying to hide the fact that he is a performer. Most YouTubers turn musician are complete and utter trash, only in it for the money. But Joji is one of the few exceptions. He has real talent. It was after this song that the Filthy Frank fans realized how serious Joji was and how much potential he had. Little did the fans know that because of all this success with Pink Guy's music and Joji's seeds being planted, Filthy Frank was coming to an end. He uploaded just three videos in early 2017 that weren't music related, and throughout the middle of 2017, the fans pretty much got nothing. Pink Guy was more popular than ever, linking up with SoundCloud artists, releasing an album full of remixes from some of the biggest EDM producers at that time. His career was moving in the direction that he always wanted. He was going to be a full-time musician. But now George was facing another problem. Pink Guy vs Joji. Pink Guy was much bigger than Joji. His music career as Pink Guy was pretty much dependent on the Filthy Frank story. So if he wanted to pursue this full time, it just made more sense to do it as Joji. He was doing press, interviews, sometimes as Joji and sometimes as Pink Guy. He released a Joji song in July and a Pink Guy song in August and said, whichever one performs better is the career I'm going to pursue. Just kidding, but imagine it was that simple. <laughs> he said in a 2017 interview on Hot Ones that he didn't want to be limited to just one type of art or media, that he wanted to pursue both Joji and Pink Guy, but he literally never made another Pink Guy song after this interview. He could have been lying. Again, just trying to soften the blow to filthy Frank fans knowing that he won't ever come back. I wish I had the confidence, the self-confidence to, to, to switch earlier because now it's, it's, it's working out pretty well. Or maybe his label said to him, yo, there's no way you can be taken seriously as a beautiful poetic songwriter. When you release music talking about hot girls on Nickelodeon, using offensive language, and rolling around in absolute filth. I think his mind was made up. He didn't want to be Pink Guy. He was just avoiding the backlash that he knew was coming. In Tongues came out, which featured huge tracks like Will He and Demons. Tracks that started to garner him a fan base of people who didn't even know who Frank was. By now, he is officially signed to ADA Rising with distribution from Empire, giving him the backing of the multi-million dollar machine needed to navigate the music industry. He released a book, Francis of the Filth, which basically summarized the entire lore of Filthy Frank. Along with that came the last video he would ever post, basically killing Frank 
and burying him in a hole. It was poetic and artistic, and it would be officially legitimized in December of 2017 via a tweet. Filthy Frank officially retired to pursue his career as Joji. Fans could not come to terms with the retirement, even though he had been almost fully focused on music for a year at that point. But to fans, it kind of blindsided them. They didn't realize this day would actually come. In hindsight, it seems like it was all planned for years. He slowly implemented the music into the content until it became more music than comedy. It was much better than him slowly falling from grace, being censored, being attacked by the cancel culture wave, then trying to appeal to them to save his music career, putting less effort in the videos. Maybe he was doing it for his health. Maybe he wasn't making any money, but he quit before he could fall off, and that's what certified him as a YouTube legend. Just a few months after his first EP, he's doing 1,000 plus person venues as Joji. You might be wondering, if his fans hated the serious stuff so much, then how did it work? Well, he still had super diehard fans that loved his work. I mean, he had millions of followers. Even a small percentage supporting Joji was thousands. Plus, there is no denying that Joji is extremely talented. He had been working on music for over a decade at this point. He was always a musician who decided to make some goofy comedy videos, not the other way around. Plus, it's not like his music only appealed to people who knew who he was on YouTube. People discover new artists all the time that they like, and he was very talented. Ballads 1 would release November 2018, and Joji becomes the first Asian artist to top the Billboard R&B and Hip Hop album chart. See what he was able to accomplish after focusing one year on just one project? With his full focus being on Joji for the past four years, he was able to land a couple of Billboard Hot 100 singles, sold out shows all over the world, and 9 million record sales with almost no features. Nine times platinum. He stamped himself as one of the greatest YouTubers of all time, one whose legacy could never be challenged or matched due to the ever-changing political climate. And on top of that, He's already had a more successful music career than most artists after just two albums. George Miller is like the childish Gambino from YouTube. He's an extraordinary creative who can accomplish whatever he puts his mind to. I'm sure right now he's quietly planning his next move. We'll see about that in the next few years.